mark. And we just heard our final go for launch from launch director Jim Harrington here in firing room three, pulling the entire launch team, signifying everyone's readiness to resume the count in about one minute, 45 seconds, pressing on toward the launch of Discovery and Mission STS-82 at 3.55 a.m. Eastern Time. NTD Houston flight 212. Go ahead, flight. We're putting step 1036 and 37 and work at this time. Okay, top. Countdown clock will begin in one minute. Mark. T-minus nine minutes and counting. And the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. T-minus eight minutes, 30 seconds and counting. All systems continuing to be in good shape for launch this morning. TLTOCC, configure fuel cell essential bus door switches. Pilot Horowitz just uh, configured the orbiter's crew cabin uh, to flip the switches to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses on the vehicle. Just a few seconds, the orbiter access arm will be attracted away from the orbiter's crew module, and uh, that event is happening. The arm can be re-extended in just a few seconds if necessary. T-minus seven minutes and counting. The orbiter test conductor will be given Pilot Horowitz at go to perform auxiliary power unit pre-start in just a few seconds. Recorders are running. Copy that. TLT OTC perform APU pre-start. Okay. Doing APU pre-start. The auxiliary power units will actually be started at about the T-minus five minute point. 
T minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting. All continuing to be very well for the launch today. No issues, it's very quiet here in the firing room. Weather is still a go. T-minus five minutes and counting. Let's just go for order AP start. TLT, OTC, perform AP start. Rank and AP And CDR, OTC, reconfigure heaters. Here, reconfigure one. And the auxiliary power units are configured for launch. Coming up on a final purge of the main engines. The main engine valves are being opened to prepare for start. T minus four minutes and counting. And a profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started. These are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify that they are ready for launch. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The three main en engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. All systems are go for launch at this time, just a few minutes away from the 22nd voyage of Discovery with a crew of seven. T minus three minutes and counting to the launch of Discovery on mission STS-82. DLS is go for EP, LOT, pressurization. Now pressurizing the external tank for flight. DLT, OTC, clear caution and warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. No unexpected errors, and clearing. And the gaseous oxygen uh, vent hood. The gaseous oxygen vent hood at the top of the tank is being retracted away at this time. Every OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow, and we wish you all a fantastic voyage. Good luck, gentlemen. All right, Bruce, thanks a lot. T minus two minutes and counting. Seven member crew is about to embark on the second of five missions to service the Hubble Space Telescope. All systems aboard Discovery are go. Discovery will be launched on an easterly trajectory on an orbit inclined 28.45 degrees to the equator. Less than two minutes away now from the launch. Discovery's launch marks the 16th night launch. One minute, 30 seconds. We have an indication that the three main engines are ready for launch. Coming up very shortly at the T minus one minute mark. T minus one minute. 
At the T minus 31 second mark, Discovery's onboard computers will have control of vehicle functions. T minus 35 seconds. T minus 25 seconds. 20. T minus 15 seconds and counting. All systems go. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, ignition and liftoff. Discovery now on its way to service NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. Houston now controlling. We're all program, Houston. Roger roll, Discovery. Roll maneuver is complete aboard Discovery. The vehicle's now in a heads down position on course for a 28 and a half degree, 309 nautical mile orbit. Discovery already uh, one, one and a half miles in altitude and downrange from the launch site, uh, one and a half miles as well. Three main engines uh, beginning to throttle down now as the orbiter prepares to pass through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. The three engines now at 67% of rated thrust. The engine's now beginning to throttle back up. Discovery, go ahead, throttle up. Go ahead, throttle up. The three liquid-fueled engines are now back at full throttle. Discovery's altitude is 13 miles, downrange from the launch site, 10 and a half miles. Now traveling 1,800 miles per hour. The three good uh, electrical systems or fuel cells and hydraulic systems providing the hydraulic power to the orbiter's uh, engines. The solid rocket boosters beginning to uh, tail off with their chamber pressure standing by for burnout and separation of the uh, twin solid rocket boosters. SRB separation is confirmed. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Discovery is now downrange from the launch site of 40 miles at an altitude of 35 miles. Performance nominal. Performance thus far in the launch phase has been as expected. Three good hydraulic systems and fuel cells and the main engines are still performing uh, as expected at 104% of rated thrust. Commander Ken Bowersox and pilot Scott Horowitz watching over uh, all of the orbiter systems from the forward portion of the flight deck. Uh, directly behind them, flight engineer Steve Hawley and mission specialist Joe Tanner, while Greg Harbaugh, Mark Lee, and Steve Smith uh, ride down on the mid-deck of the orbiter. Approaching three and a half minutes into the flight, Discovery is now traveling 4,000 miles per hour, downrange from the launch site, 100 miles, with an altitude now of 57 miles. All uh, continuing to go very smoothly. Three good main engines at 104% of rated thrust. Three good hydraulic systems and fuel cells aboard the orbiter. Discovery, press ATO. Press ATO. 
Discovery can reach orbit on two engines should one fail, but again, all three are still uh, performing as planned. Negative return. Negative return. Discovery can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure, but again, uh, all three still uh, in excellent shape. Discovery is now traveling 5,200 miles per hour downrange from the launch site, 170 miles at an altitude of 70 miles. Approaching five minutes into the flight, Discovery's speed is now up to 6,200 miles per hour. Discovery, press to Miko. Press to Miko. With three good en engines, Discovery can now reach a safe orbit on two engines. It is now downrange from the launch site of 258 miles at an altitude of 70 miles. Discovery speed is up to 7,000 miles per hour. Single engine ops three, Banjul. Single engine ops three, Banjul. That call indicating Discovery could make it to a transatlantic abort uh, landing if that were to become necessary, but the orbiter has uh, been given a go to press on to orbit. Discovery, single engine Banjul 104. Single engine Banjul 104. At the six minute mark into the launch or into the launch phase, Discovery is now traveling 8,500 miles per hour, now downrange from the launch site to 365 miles. The altitude uh, leveling out at about 70 miles, uh, allowing Discovery to uh, accelerate rapidly, headed toward a 309 nautical mile orbit. Single engine press 109. Discovery can reach orbit on one engine should two fail at this point. Again, all three continuing uh, as expected at 104% of rated thrust. Discovery single engine press 104. Single engine press 104. Approaching uh, the seven minute mark in the flight. Traveling uh, 11,200 miles per hour, now downrange from the launch site at 528 miles.